the word Contra has been synonymous with video game greatness since the late 1980s after Konami ported its arcade titles Contra and Super Contra to the NES. The first Contra title set the bar for run-and-gun shooters for many of us retro gamers, with frustrating yet rewarding difficulty and co-op gameplay that could instill lasting memories and possibly make or break friendships. By the early 90s, Konami had cemented itself as a trusted NES developer in the eyes of gamers. So when a third Contra NES installment titled Contra Force was set for release in 1992, it was bound to be another massive hit, right? Well, it's suffice to say that Contra Force was a massive failure for Konami. And the story of the struggles and greedy decisions made during its development will help you understand why Konami wants to sweep the memory of this so-called Contra game under the rug today. Now let's get started. Nintendo and third-party developers like Konami were presented with new challenges in the early 90s when transitioning from 8-bit to 16-bit gaming. One would assume that the developers at Konami were excited to bring the Contra franchise to the Super Nintendo, given Contra and Super C's success on the NES. Early media coverage of the first SNES Contra title, like the January 1992 issue of Nintendo Power, touted the game as Contra 4, set to release later that year. But the Super Nintendo game was only a footnote in the Packwatch article featuring a third and brand new NES Contra title set to release before Contra 4, named Contra Force. The article shares exciting new features in Contra Force, like four new characters at your disposal and new weapons for you to master. Honestly, it sounded like a win-win here for Konami, because it appears they were looking to satisfy Contra fans who were fortunate to already have a Super Nintendo but they were also not forgetting the players who had not transitioned to the 16-bit arena just yet. I mean, that makes for a nice heartwarming story, but that's not exactly how it went down. Let's back up a bit to 1991 when Japanese magazines were hyping up a new Konami Famicom game named Archound, which centered around a heroic task force taking down an evil faction of terrorists set to release in the fall of that year. With the popularity of Famicom waning during these times, Konami decided to ultimately scrap Arkhound's release in Japan. Not wanting to waste the work put into developing Arkhound, Konami decided to rebrand the game as a Contra title in North America, hoping fans would purchase the game just because it had the Contra logo on the box. I mean, business-wise this makes sense, but the way that Packwatch article read in Nintendo Power, it gave the illusion that Contra Force wasn't a last-minute panic decision to cash in on the North American NES market. But a few lines from the Packwatch article do knock some chinks in Contra Force's armor, like stating that the game's characters are shorter and less defined than their predecessors. The author continues by stating the characters look more realistic in the previous games as well. But to be fair, there are some elements in Contra Force that do stay true to the Contra playbook, like side-scrolling run-and-gun and overhead gameplay, in addition to your own character being plagued by one-hit kills. I mean, you do see a legit Contra logo at the title screen, but it vanishes almost as quickly as it appears. It's really like Konami didn't want you to focus on this being a reputable Contra game. You quickly realize that Bill and Lance are nowhere to be found in this game, and you are no longer fighting an alien force hundreds of years in the future. You are now in control of an elite task force called, um, the Contra Force, in 1992 assembled to bring down a terrorist organization known as DNME. Get it? DNME? Oh boy. I agree with the Nintendo Power article that you immediately notice the look and feel of the characters are much different than previous Contra games. They feel heavy and the controls don't feel as tight. The immediate weapon upgrades are gone now too, and replaced with an upgrade system similar to Gradius. Or Gradius, however you want to say it. I still don't know which one's right. But the biggest issue that I'm sure anyone has with Contra Force is the ridiculous slowdown with too many enemies on screen. I feel it happens way more often than it should, even early on in the game, and it really gets on my nerves. Obviously, this game is not one of my favorite NES games, but I am not saying there aren't any positive qualities and unique additions to the gameplay that are fun concepts. 
I do think the ability to select characters with different weapons to suit your current combat situation is a great feature, and being able to place other members of your task force alongside you for computer-based backup adds an element of strategy. I also have to admit that being able to blow up objects in the background is pretty fun. And might I just add a strange coincidence I noticed when I played this game? So two of your main characters are Burns and Smith, and the boss you answer to is named Fox. I mean, is there some strange Simpsons connection going on here? And even this dude looks like he has makeup like Krusty the Clown. Just a strange observation I had. Let me know if you think this seems legit in the comments. Konami must have lost confidence promoting Contra Force around the time of the winter CES in early January of 1992, because all of the praise coming from the Packwatch article from Nintendo Power Issue 32 was forgotten by the time Issue 34 released in March, reporting the top development stories from the winter CES. Konami's section of the article now highlighted Contra 3 The Alien Wars for the Super Nintendo, previously named Super Contra 4, with absolutely zero mention of Contra Force. Now that the Super Nintendo game was named Contra 3, Konami clearly intended to release the 16-bit game before Contra Force. This was definitely a smart move by Konami, with The Alien Wars becoming a massive success after its release in early 1992 and Contra 3 is still considered one of the best Contra titles in the franchise today. It's a reasonable assumption that releasing Contra Force first could have made gamers lose confidence and trust in the Contra franchise, leading to a lackluster premiere of what could have been Super Contra 4 on Nintendo's new 16-bit console. With Konami deciding to push back Contra Force's North American release to September of 1992, this gave ample time for Contra 3 to gain acceptance and favor with gamers, with the new NES release quietly fading to the background, despite a six-page spread dedicated to Contra Force in the August edition of Nintendo Power. It's no surprise that Contra Force wasn't a commercial success. There's even a hidden easter egg in the first level with the number 17 that you see here in the background, documenting the number of copies Contra Force sold on its release day. I mean this isn't true, but I did have you go in there for a minute. In all seriousness, given how few of the games were actually sold, Contra Force is a rare NES game to have in your collection today. Just a loose card itself is worth hundreds, and if you have a complete and sealed version, you're probably talking thousands of dollars. Contra Force is actually considered non-canon to the franchise due to it not originally being intended as a Contra title, and it isn't anywhere to be found in the Contra Anniversary Collection released in 2019. All things considered, Contra Force is never going to be one of my go-to NES games, but I feel it tells an intriguing story behind a mostly forgotten piece of retro history, where our beloved Konami tried to pull a fast one on gamers here in North America. Special shout out to our friend Richie R for finding a very challenging mola boy first in our last video. Well done, buddy. Till next time, guys. G3 out.